Christoph, last time we saw each other was in your lab. The big question of the Free Will Project that you were leading uh, was in its early stages. Uh, we've uh, uh, really appreciated seeing the experiments uh, in, during you know, the you know, surgical uh, uh, procedures as well as the seeing the experiments afterwards. Uh, reflecting on it from a theoretical point of view, what you were trying to look at in terms of what the brain is doing and analyzing free will. Uh, how has the project gone and what are your expectations for the future? Firstly, a simple, a seemingly simple question like do we have free will, if you think about it in terms of brain science and different psychological operation devolves into a whole set of subsidiary complex questions. So we focus on this aspect to what extent are there different brain how much difference does it make when you do, when you choose versus when you pick? And when you pick, two, when you go to the supermarket and you pick one of two identical Coke bottles versus you decide should I have Coke today or Pepsi, which is sort of a little bit more meaningful, or should I choose <coughs> one? Um, these are choices that may have a difference, while when, when I pick, it doesn't really matter what I pick because they're basically identical. And then we, we try to think about an experimental setup where we can do that in a lab with, with, with actually with, with patients. Um, as you mentioned, these are patients that have uh, electrodes implanted in them. And then, to, we, to, our, to our initial surprise, we could actually do something like this in real time, where we can play, where we can have the patient play a simple game, and then actually decide on the spot whether to, uh, you know, it's a penny matching game, whether they should uh, lift the, the left hand or the right hand. If they win one, if they li if they lift the same hand as I do, then they win something. Otherwise, I win something. And so, in this meaningful. Uh, in this meaningful decision paradigm, we, we, we do see brain signals that predict ahead of time w what patients will choose. In fact, we can show preliminary experiments, so here we have to, dish, uh, have to do additional control, seem to suggest that this signal comes even before the person, them, him or herself, is aware that they have chosen. And so we can read off this signal from their brain before the patient himself knows that he's going to make this choice or lift that hand. And is there a difference in that case between picking and choosing? There seems to be different brain areas. So early indications are, again, we have to do more experiments because we, we really depend on the placement of the electrodes that's entirely determined by clinical criteria by the right. neurosurgeon. Right. So what we would like as scientists is that we have electrodes everywhere so we can make this no, we decision. Won't, we won't let you do that. We won't <laughs> correctly and you shouldn't, the neurosurgeon shouldn't. So, But the, the early indications are that there are different brain parts involved, whether you make a deliberate decision where you have to, and it makes sense, in one case I have to think about my decision. Okay, last time I raised my right hand and the previous time I also raised my right hand, so maybe I should raise my left hand, but the person maybe expects me that's to do that, so maybe I'll stick with the right hand. That's very different from just saying, ah, oh, whatever, this time I, I you know, I, I lift uh, right. this hand. Different parts of the brain are involved, well, and we can part? begin to see. Well, so in um, one case, when, when I actually have to make a deliberate decision, it seems to be more structures that sort of the, the anterior cingulate, which is, in, is sort of involved in more deliberate introspection type of thinking, versus another part of the brain that sort of that may be more involved in random decision making. Mm -hmm. And how does this compare with the original limit experiments, which really were designed as, as, as picking, not choosing? Correct. The, the original limit experiment was sort of a beautiful experiment. Well, was this, uh, sort of that threw open the entire, the entire question to experimental uh, analysis. But the, as you point out, there are several differences. One, it was, um, it was picking it was a random, you know, you, 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 you raise your hand whenever you feel like it. And also, it only allowed it to do it on average, or they, they looked at 30 trials or 50 trials, and on average, looking backwards, they could infer, uh, you know, they saw this readiness potential. In our case, it's a real online single trial game. So in other words, as you're thinking here, I'm making my decision, am I going to do this or this, we read off your brain signals. So it's a much more, it's a much more difficult situation trying to do it in an actual patient on a single trial in real time, ahead of time, not after the fact. And part of the reason you can do that is because you have the electrodes not, not on the scalp, but, but on in the brain itself. Exactly, the inside the brain, in yeah. fact. So, so we are much closer to the, to the signals themselves. Up here, you hear sort of a distant echo. It's a little bit like if your surface, if you observe the, the surface of the ocean, you, you know, you observe the waves, you can infer something about the ocean, rather when you're actually down, uh, you know, inside the ocean with probes down there. So that makes it much easier for us. And, and so what does that imply about the nature of free will? As already suggested by the by, by the Libet experiments, when I make when I make a free decision, there are lots of parts of my brain that participate. It's still me that makes a decision. It's not my parents or my environment. It's still me. But there are many unconscious precursors. There are unconscious signature of this decision making until 
I finally decide to do something and then I may only have the feeling that I just decided after the actual neuronal events have already happened. So it's like, a, it's like a sending me a carbon copy. Oh, by the way, we just decided to make this decision and I become aware of that. So at the time point at which, at which I'm actually aware of it, the decision has already been taken somewhere in the catacombs of my brain. But the conscious me is only informed of it afterwards. So it still means I made the decision. It's not somebody else, it's still me. But it, it seems to be, in this case, primarily a partial unconscious process that's involved in this decision making. And, and is that piece the same in picking and choosing, even though it's different brain parts? Is the temporal relationship similar? No, there are probably different parts of the brain that are involved. In one case, it's sort of, you can think of it as a random number generator. You know, I'm trying to be random. I'm trying, it just doesn't matter what I pick as long as I sort of do this with, with some regularity. In the other case, it's much more, it's a different part of the brain that's involved in deliberate planning, in, in sort of reasoning, in trying to outsmart you. So that part is conscious, but then the actual decision itself may have, so, so it's, a, it's a complex melange of, co of conscious deliberation and unconscious decision processes. So as I said early on, it's, it's this simple question, you know, is it free and what do I mean by free will devolves in the whole series of complicated operations, some of which are conscious accessible, some of which are not but many of which operate outside the limelight of consciousness, operate sub-rosa, subliminal, without me having a direct conscious access. Mm -hmm. And what about some of the recent criticisms of liberty experiments in general, that, you, you, that the, uh, the superficial claim that what it seems to be doing, it's not really doing in terms of the readiness? Well, I mean, some of the claims we can rule out by doing it if you can do something in real time, in a real game situation, all right? Not after the fact when you have to do statistics over 30 cases, you know, that shows that you can do it. If I can predict you, you know, same in the financial market, no matter what I say, if I can predict what you do with some degree of regularity, you know, better than chance, then whatever, you know, so that tells me I am onto something, right? The interpretation of which, that's a different matter, but the experiment in, it, itself, I think, was a, was a beautiful experiment that threw open the entire question, as I said before, to experimental analysis, and I think the basis of it is true, is valid. And, and, and therefore, what can you feel that you have achieved in terms of advancing the, the understanding of free will by the experiments you've done? That there are different parts of the brain that are involved in different aspects of freely choosing, of what we call voluntary actions. This is a voluntary action and the different parts of the brain that are involved, some are, operate un unconsciously and some operate consciously. So what does that mean about free will? Well, so people always ask me, do you have free will, yes or no? I want to know, is there yes or no? And then I answer, well, the question is not as simple as that. It, it's a complicated answer.